All right, so last time, if you remember, or if you've just watched it, if you're watching this weeks or months or years from now, <laughs> um, Zanakarib was killed by his own sons. In a temple. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, we think almost certainly in a, whilst praying or in a temple or something. Some most heretical thing you could have done. Mm. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's so totally beyond the pale mm. that uh, it's as I had on that's the, the sort of one g good son, really, isn't he? Yeah. So I'm not having that. So what had happened is Zanakarib had many sons, at least five mm. surviving sons, and he'd made the eldest one sort of crown prince or something and then changed his mind mm. for whatever reason, decided that that eldest son, Esher Nadin Sumi, he decided he was going to sort of dispossess him and give it to the youngest son, Esa Haddon. Um, and the oldest brother, all the older all the older brothers, were not happy with that. Mm. Um, and so we're told, we know there's some sort of, well, not exactly civil war. Well, nearly a civil war. I, I think, yeah, you could call it a civil war, I think. It doesn't quite come to a battle, full battle, but it very nearly does. Yeah. Either way, there's sort of lots and lots of factional strife <clears> in Nineveh, <throat> this is, because an Akarib <clears throat> favoured Nineveh. Had his capital yeah. universe. As, as I recall, it's something like uh, the older brothers, who are obviously bad eggs, even by Assyrian standards, um, essentially slandered Esarhaddon and he had to flee to the west or something. And he r gathered an army, they gathered an army. But as they are heretical patricides, and he wasn't, he was, my, he was able to essentially uh, do a Sulla and just be like, look, I'm obviously the right person to join. Come over to me. Mm. And the army defects to him, and that's yeah. the, that's all it is. Yeah. So, yeah, that's right. pretty much it. Right, okay. Yeah. I, the only thing I think that was slightly incorrect there is that um, I believe Essa had on fled east. Oh, did he? But, right, yeah, okay. you're exactly okay. right, though. Yeah. But, but all the rest <laughs> of that, exactly right. Yeah. It happens quite a lot in history. I, yeah. The thing that springs to my mind is the Wars of the Roses. Loads of mm. times, two, two armies will line up, mm. and then... <laughs> There will be like some sort of parlay between the top brass, but all the normal men sort of make up their mind. Like, yeah. we don't, no one really wants a battle usually. Yeah. Um, and, the, the, you know, the normal people, the normal soldiers will uh, sort of make decisions on if they're mm. going to defect or not. Yeah, this and happens then a bunch be, of times, uh, actually. And then there'll be, mm. uh, you, there'll be some sort of critical mass yeah. where everyone just, for whatever reason, sort of yeah. confidence, a bit like on a stock yeah. market. There's some sort of confidence game going on. Mm. And people think, oh, one side is just going to win, so I'm not going to oh. bother fighting for the losing side. So I'm either going to completely desert or just go over to them, in, in and then this, there's no battle. In this particular case, it seems to be a moral question. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Actually, Saradon, like he it? was, you know, he was made the crown prince by Sennacherib. These guys did murder the king. Mm. Are we fighting for them? Actually, yeah. You know, actually, no. And, and then you get other ones like with Pyrrhus, where he, the Macedonian army defects to him. It's based on his charisma and you know glory. But then you've got like Sulla as well, which again was kind of a moral issue as well. It's like, no, no, I'm going to come back and fix Rome. Just mm. Come on over. And uh, and so, yeah, but there are loads of times. Like I said, I can think of like three off the top of my head yeah. where this happens. It is a fascinating and highly dramatic thing because we are talking about tens of thousands of men who are ranged against each other, and then something happens, and this tidal shift happens, and then the 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 leaders of the opposition, Sennacherib's uh, older sons, they realise their position is gone. Yeah. They don't have a position anymore. You know? Their men under them are like, are we the baddies? <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> it's funny you should mention yeah. <laughs> The great conquering Sennacherib um, and we're fighting for his murderers? Mm, Just, yeah. You know, the disinherited murderers? <laughs> what are we doing? You know, does Asher look favourably upon this course of action? Probably not. It's interesting you should mention Pyrrhus, uh, but it happens a fair bit in the wars of the, the Diadochi, mm. the successors of Alexander. Oh, yes. Yeah. Uh, where they'll just switch sides. I think it happens a lot more, but well, it does happen a lot more mm. in civil wars, civil mm. strife, because if you're fighting for your homeland and your family, then you're, un you're much less likely to do it. Yeah. But if it's just, um, there's we've got different ruling families over my country. Where it's purely political. Uh, right. Right, yeah, because that's it is the, the, with the Diadochi, with Pyrrhus, with the War of the Roses, right. with Sulla, yeah. the with yeah. Esau Haddon, these things are purely political. This mm. is not, as you say, you know, the mm. Germans aren't invading, and you know, and so that's when again, again it springs to my mind the um, Augustus and Mark Antony mm. uh, civil wars. Mm. Um, again, you can just sort of uh, you're probably 
that, that, that's a propaganda war. Yeah. There's a whole propaganda side to it yeah. of uh, the appearances really matter mm. rather than just who's strongest in the field. You've actually got to make an argument mm. why, why you're the best, why people should come over to you. Yeah. And uh, we are told that those older brothers, quote, uh, they, they, they went mad. And they drew their swords inside the city of Nineveh. Oh, really? And, and started, yes, yeah, slandering um, the young Esarhaddon, mm. um, obviously calling him, you know, that he's the usurper or something. Um, yeah, if you're going to play a propaganda war, you obviously just sling as much crap at your enemy as you possibly can, right? But, yeah, but it obviously wasn't very effective. Yeah. Or, I mean, yeah, yeah. The king did name me. You did murder him. Hmm. You've got a really weak hand here. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. So Sennacherib uh, fled. Um, Esarhaddon. Uh, sorry, Esarhaddon. what did I say? Sennacherib. Oh, no, yeah, sorry. No, yeah. Sennacherib's dead. Esarhaddon yeah. so fled east. <laughs> Not fleeing anywhere. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, he raises an army yep. somehow. Um, it's great in this stuff in history. It was, yeah. it's, it's frustrating, annoying, and great that you don't really know any of the detail of that. He just raised an army. Th this happens all the time <laughs> yeah. as well. And I just really want to know. I like, Just a quick aside here. I always want to know the details. Like, does he just, with a handful of men, wander up to a village and go, right, I need soldiers? Well, who, who are you? Why? Oh, I guess we're coming then. You know, and then suddenly he's got 20,000 men. It's like, how did that happen? It's. I really wish we had more information on how in the ancient world they raised armies. Because it just mm. happens all the time. Mm. I raised an army. Don't just say it like it's Rome total war. <laughs> you know, how did that yeah. happen? Yeah. What did he say to persuade them to come with him? I really, where did he get the arms from? It, where's, uh, where's the logistics being organized? In, it, I just, it drives me crazy. That's just this one line, but there must've been so much work. It's not like Civ where the yeah. city just builds new units. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> it's not like that. Yeah. The only thing I could say on that is because obviously we don't know, um, but I, the, Assy the Assyrian Empire, even by this point, mm. and we're still talking the 700s BC, <clears throat> sorry, 600s or late 600s BC, um, would still have been uh, quite a sophisticated mm -hmm. bureaucracy, quite a sophisticated beast where you, there'll be all sorts of things in place for raising men and yep. um, making arms and mm. armour and all sorts of things. Mm. Um, it's not sort of ancient Sumer anymore. Mm. It's, um, well, as we've said before in the previous ones, it's more sophisticated than in some senses in centuries and centuries and centuries later. Mm. So Esther had, and I suppose as, um, as uh, you know, we would still, still would have been famous as one of the great princes yeah. Under Zennacherib. So did he go to some bureaucrats? He would have had a name, you know, the name recognition sort yeah. of thing. But did he go to bureaucrats in like, you know, an Assyrian outpost somewhere in Babylonia and said, right, okay, you know, whatever troops are on the rolls here, send them to me. I mean, we, we do, I assume that's what he did, but we just don't know, you know. Right. Well, whatever, whatever happened, yeah. he raised an army, he comes back to Nineveh. Apparently the two armies and the, old, the older brothers... Uh, raise an army of their own. Mm. They come out onto the plane in front of Nineveh, like they, you know, uh, in battle array, mm -hmm. and so they're going to throw down, and it just doesn't happen. All the other side just sort of defect, mm. um, and uh, well, that's it. That's the ball game, really, because <laughs> yeah. then Esarhaddon is able to enter uh, victoriously in Nineveh, sort of unopposed. Well, the brothers literally have no way of resisting him now. Yeah, mm. yeah, the undisputed mm. champ. Um, and as had, and as you can imagine, I mean, his father's the the great, the king of Assyria was was murdered. But the great and king he, as well. One of the greatest yeah. uh, there's been so far. Yeah, one of the greatest figures in ancient history, in all of history, still mm. you can say. I mean, use the word great in inverted commas, but you know. Well, use the word great to mean large and expansive, right, yeah. not good or fantastic. Yeah, right, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> which um, is usually how the great is actually used. And of course, Esther had himself would have, had been in mortal danger. I'm sure if his yeah. older brothers had got him, they would have chopped him up. Undoubtedly. Right? Yeah. Um, and so in true Assyrian style, he doesn't spare the rod, should we say. I yep. mean, his, his <laughs> wrath, his vengeance is something to behold. He kills them all and all their families. Like their whole family. Like, and there will be his... Nephews. Nieces and nephews yep. and aunties and all sorts of things. He just kills them all. Um, this is the thing actually a bit later in history, in Persian history, mm. uh, and Parthian, the Parthians as well, I believe, did this. Quite often when a new king ca came in, mm -hmm. um, he would kill all his brothers. Yeah. Also the Ottomans, I think, did stuff yeah. like that. Um, 
we're, yeah, we're just going to clear the board. <clears throat> but the, the Machiavelli makes a very fine point on this. Uh, you have to root out the entire line of the uh, enemy, or the, the rival prince, or else he becomes a bulwark around which resistance and civil war grows. Yeah, so, if you and your whole family are mental barbarians, yeah, that's the case. Well, you know, you, the Habsburgs didn't really need to do that, didn't they? The sh- Windsors don't require that, do they? Sure, what happened to the princes in the tower? I mean, well, they, well uh, yeah, it, do, it does happen. It does happen, and but, it happens for a reason because this is what when you have dynastic politics like this, um, <laughs> you have people who are loyal to that family, and they won't abandon their loyalty, and any people that you harm or offend on the way to your ascent, use them as a rallying point to gather around. And suddenly you might have like 10,000 men around someone who also has a claim to the throne you sit on. And so I'm not saying it's not barbaric. Mm-hmm. I am saying it, it is a necessary and well understood, even in ancient times, mm-hmm. uh, part of royal politics. Mm-hmm. To watch the full video, please become a premium member at lotuseaters.com.